that release, um, with that release, users of the Apple Mail client are prompted with a protect mail activity dialog box, um, which you know, a high adoption rate is virtually guaranteed. Um, and the Apple Mail client is used for about half of all email that's sent or received on the internet. So it's going to have a large impact on the on the on the uh, email marketing uh, industry. And again, open open rate will no longer be a, a reliable metric. Um, I spoke to some uh, some friends of mine in uh, in the email marketing field on the tech side of a company called Live Intent specifically, and I'll be happy to follow up with anybody with more details if anybody would like to be connected with them or any any questions. But I wanted to get their take um, since they're obviously at the forefront of what's going on with with uh, I, uh, iOS 15 and and uh, since they're in the email space and they're uh, um, recommending that advertisers shift away from open rates, obviously, and that they focus on engagement metrics like clicks and conversions um, for them to become the new anchor uh, measurements for, for email programs, and that there, there should be a reassessment of campaigns that rely on opens right now. Um, but I mean, one, one bright spot is that we still, like th these capabilities still exist in Android um, for now. I haven't heard anything, anything concrete about them being um, deprecated. You know, the the um, the Android ID being deprecated, like the IDFA. But um, uh, for now, it's it, they they they're still there. They still exist. Okay. Oops. Slide. Um, so display and online video. So. Um, about 20% of web traffic in uh, uh, the U.S. and Canada is to is on iOS devices. Um, in the Hearst Television uh, uh, universe, for our owned and operated uh, websites and apps, about I ran some numbers. About 33% of our impressions, a third of our impressions, um, are uh, on display and online video impressions are to iOS 14. And, Five and higher since the since they uh, since it launched, so substantial and about twenty percent for our extension, our audience extension business are on iOS fourteen or five or higher. Now, um, we haven't seen. I, I expect those numbers to be similar for premium publishers like us. Uh, um, you know, maybe maybe higher or lower, and you know, depending on what the uh, you know what the what the publisher's niche is, that kind of thing. But um, you know, it's. The, the impact is there, but it hasn't been huge. I'm not hearing that um, like we can't, we're not able to fulfill on camp, fulfill on campaigns because of because of these changes yet or anything like that. Or really having to completely like pivot and shift how we're doing things because um, there's there's generally other inventory. There's other there's other options that have been available to us, but not to say it's not not having an impact. But uh, from our perspective, it's it, it, it you know, the sky's not falling. Right um and then next ott connected television so there's no idfa in ott um ott is in a position to capitalize um i i would say um on the ability to reach audiences that have been lost in mobile um uh, data management platforms have alternatives like an ip address to the idfa that they can use as identifiers for user also um any like a lot of data management platforms here at Hearst Television, we use Nielsen Marketing Cloud, but there's you know there's Adobe, there's LiveRamp, there's tons of, of different DMPs out there that that that, that folks can use. Um, I also wanted to mention here uh, the the Universal ID 2.0, uh, the UID 2.0, which is a project that or not even a project, it's a an alternative uh, like identifier that the Trade Desk has been has been uh, 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 sponsoring founding that they founded that they've been working on for a while. Um, it's um, while it's not an answer to the IDFA issue. Uh, it's really I, I just think it's it's promising to see what's happening there because it's gaining adoption from a lot of other uh, uh, you know platforms and and companies and organizations across uh, across the the whole digital advertising. The whole digital ecosystem. I'll rattle off a few that are that are on board with it: Index Exchange, Magnite, Fubo, 
TV, AMC, OpenX, Washington Post, Google Sys, Xander, LiveRamp. Now, if all of those companies are, are on board with a common ID, um, you know, that's going to be you know, the vast majority of the internet right there. So uh, while Apple has specifically stated that you know, one thing about UID 2.0 is that it's, um, it's uh, one of its foundations is an email address, um, a hashed email address. And Apple has very specifically stated that they will not allow an email address to be an alternative for, for the IDFA in their, um, in, in their operating system that it has to be specifically opt-in, uh, which an email address doesn't necessarily have to be, it can be collected or from a list or bought or, or, or something like that. But I mean, what, it, what interests me about the UID 2.0 is that it shows the industry really coming together when faced with uh, you know, a challenge like, like we have with what, the moves that Apple is making, that you know, we're, everybody's, not everybody, but a lot of different organizations in, that sit in different, you know, in, in, in different corners of the ecosystem are coming together to work together to come up with alternatives. And um, you know, that's, I think that's a, uh, a, a, a theme for, for what's going on, if, if anything. Um, also, the TV manufacturers themselves, the Samsungs, the LGs, the Vizios, they have their own IDs as well. I mean, my understanding is that's why TVs are so cheap these days, because they're collecting your data um, uh, and, and, and selling it. But they won't be impacted. The IDs that they're collecting, uh, that they're using to collect data won't be impacted um, by the IDFA de deprecation. Um, and those could potentially be integrated with data management platforms. Um, and I have to also get a plug in here for our own OTT product, Hearst Any Screen OTT. Um, so we have, uh, um, so we're in the process of launching um, our uh, owned and operated apps for each of our 33 TV stations across the country with that are gonna have live, uh, live and on-demand uh, news. Uh, along with with other content, uh, that coupled with um, uh, relationships with other premium publishers and first back companies like A and E, we have access to their inventory. Others like AMC that we're working with, AMC Discovery, Newsy, Viacom CBS. Um, we focus on um, long form, full episode, uh, um, premium content, uh, and uh, the performance in CTV is great. Uh, it's we're, get, we're uh, seeing like 98% completion rates on video ads. Video ads, we can do things can, like attribution, uh, you know, site attribution and, and uh, um, retargeting and things like that aren't uh, uh, aren't under, in question like they would be in some other platforms that are relying on, on, on iOS. Um, so I'm sure Cassie would be thrilled to, to talk more with you about Hearst Any Screen OTT, as I would too reach out afterwards and then so in, in conclusion the industry is evolving um, the impact of apple's changes the impacts of apple's changes are still being quantified still being assessed um, and uh, advertisers publishers platforms um, are, we're all adapting and working on alternatives like the uid 2.0 uh, and there are likely to be other options that will offset the, the losses from the idfa and DMPs have, have, have alternatives. And another possible silver lining is the is this will, uh, we have CTV, OTT, um, that uh, is likely to drive dollars, the changes that Apple's making are likely to drive dollars that way, where these tech, where the tactics that we rely on and our advertisers expect are still, are still available and not problematic. And then for email shift, the, the shift to KPIs that don't rely on open rates. Um, but we still have Android. Um, and that's the update I wanted to share uh, from Hearst Television Digital. Uh, Apple is shaking things up, but the industry is adapting. And while we've lost some capabilities, viable alternatives are emerging and will continue to emerge. And um, thank you. That's, that's, uh, that's my update on where we are. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And I hope everyone found it interesting and all uh, informative. Mark, thank you so much. I haven't seen any questions um, come in through the chat. 
uh, we can go ahead and open up if anybody has any questions and um, Ann and I can kind of monitor that. Mark, I just have to say thank you. Like that's, that's, I feel like this is one of the areas that I have never really looked into. So just the simple information uh, was very helpful and eye-opening for me. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. Um, I mean, feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm, I'm learning about this too. When, when, when Cassie had asked me to, to, to present on, on what's going on with Apple and iOS and then you know, I was digging into iOS 14 and then, and then boom, iOS 14, uh, 15 hits. It's a, it's moving really fast and there's a lot of, and, and everybody's trying to figure out what to do. So it's really interesting to be, to see what's happening and what's on top of what, I mean, and, and to try and stay on top of it. Um, but if there's, yeah, I'm, I'm more than, you know, thanks for that. I, I hope it was informative and if there's anything else I, I, I haven't, there, there's a lot more to it is what I'm, what I'm trying to say, there's so many different angles and so many different impacts that this, that these changes have. Um, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be happy to continue to do research and give you my take on things as, as things progress and, and, and unfold. Mark, what's your take on when do you really feel that this in, is going to impact advertisers? Um, 14 or 15 or both, I guess both. I know Apple hasn't been pushing um, the, the updates for iOS 15 yet. Um, I, the adoption rate of iOS 15 has not been that high. I think it's two thirds, yeah, about two thirds are on iOS 14, uh, the latest version of iOS 14. But since iOS 15 came out, they're not like force updating it yet. And from what I've been reading, you know, in like the Apple geek blogs and everything, they're 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 waiting. I guess Apple does that eventually. Um, they're they're waiting for that to 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 happen. Um, that's when I think it'll really start hitting hitting um, hitting us more. And it's and it's really like the Facebooks that are that are that are hurting the most. Those that have that use that identifier across, you know, that that rely on that on that identifier, you know, to, to power like their 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 audience network across a network of apps that have installed Facebook's you know, advertising software, their SDK. Um, so they're, they're already feeling it. I think when Apple, um, you know, that, that, I mean, if I, if I had to say, uh, <laughs> it's tough to say when, but I think, um, you know, within, when when Apple really starts pushing those pushing those updates, when they start forcing people to update, that's when we're going to start to see more um, you know, more of an impact. Um, I don't know if that. Helped. <laughs> Sorry if I'm not trying to be evasive or anything. No, else. that's great. What what tactics um, will have the least impact? Do you think? Um. Well, again, I would say CTV and OTT. Um, we can still still um, do everything that we've, so here at Hearst Television, we rely a lot, uh, a lot of our campaigns have site attribution. So users on, on the OTT side, users that are that have seen an OTT ad, uh, we retarget them on a, on, a, on a website basically, or in a, with an online video ad or attribution where users that have been exposed to an OTT ad, um, we, we, we track them to determine if they subsequently visited the site or, you know, potentially even bought a, you know, bought a, you know, made a purchase or something or, or something like that. Those, those kind of tactics, I don't, you know, in an OTT will continue to be available at, uh, for, for the foreseeable future because, because really the percentage of OTT connected television that is, um, uh, uh, you know, that relies on iOS, iOS is, is very small. If anything, you don't, you don't want that kind of traffic when you're doing, when you're doing CTV, you don't want like, people on phones um, so much. You're looking for people sitting in their living room watching, you know, Netflix or something. Um, Netflix is a bad example. Uh, Aroku, I'll say instead. Um, but um, with email, yeah, we will still have clicks. We'll still have, you know, still be able to do some of the attribution that we were, 
that that was previously we were previously able to do. It's just will opens won't be reliable for Apple anymore. The so open rate is something that we'll we'll have to have to shift from. Um, and you know, again, I'll be happy to connect to like to if you know, to connect with my my colleagues at, at Live Intent, who are kind of at the forefront of what's happening with iOS 15 and email. Um, if anybody would would like more information or, or details on what on how they're 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 confronting it in the email space. Great. I don't see any I don't see any other questions in the chat. Does anyone? I, I have one more, Terry. Great. Um, so let's see here. So consumer privacy is important. How would you go about leveraging first party data um, with your customers that have approved of use of their data? I think I read that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I didn't really touch on, on, on first party data, but that's, you know, that gets into the whole cookie um, discussion as well. In addition, that's a whole nother can of worms I didn't even, uh, that, that I'm trying to stay on top of that I didn't really even um, go into here, but I mean, not, not just cookies, but you know, there's multiple sources of, of first party data. I think first party data um, and, and contextual targeting are going to be, uh, are, are, are going to be absolutely critical moving forward. So it's important that you collect as much first party data uh, as possible with, with, with users, users consent. Um, there's the concept of clean rooms where uh, organizations are sharing first party data amongst, amongst themselves and they, and they have consent to do so. Um, I think, especially as cookies become you know, uh, more and more, uh, as, as the, we're marching towards deprecating cookies from Chrome, I think that's going to, uh, it's gonna, and, and with the, the privacy leg legislation uh, that's, that's coming out, I think it's, it, first party data has gotta be a big, uh, uh, at, at least from a publisher perspective, a crucial part of anybody's, of any publisher strategy, along with contextual um, and partnering with, with other, um, uh, you know, other, other like-minded publishers that are willing to do so. Um, you know, so that, that, yeah, I think that's going to be absolutely critical going forward. Thank you. Um, I would love if, if you're open to it, Mark, if you could put your contact information or the best way to contact you in the chat box, that'd be fantastic. Sure. I'd be happy to. Perfect. We um, did have another question come through too. Um, how do you help clients that don't collect the first party data? Um, that they don't. They don't collect first party data data. Do you mean if they don't collect first party data, they, they would like us to do it on their behalf and then to to, um, to, to execute a campaign? Is, is that the question? Um, I, I think it probably is. So I mean we would I mean we're we're happy to um, with, with our DMP to create custom audiences for, for, for specific campaigns, if that's, um, if, if that's what you're looking to do, or we can onload if, if you have a, um, if you, if you have a, a client with an advertiser or agency with first party data with a CRM list or something like that, and you want to reach them across our, you know, you want to target ads to them across our, our properties are, um, you know, our, whether it's connected television um, or uh, websites and apps, we can ingest those lists, you know, those, those first party data lists into our, into our system, into our data management platform. And then we're, we can reach them uh, on our, on the, on the, um, on the content that we have access to as well. We're happy to do that or create, if you want a, a first, an audience of users that have been exposed to your ad, we're happy to create that for you when, uh, when we're executing a campaign um, and then uh, uh, target them. So wherever. kind of to follow up on that question a little bit, the, with small businesses that don't really collect it, if cookies are going away, what will the next solution be for them, do you think? <laughs> Great question. Um, I'm hearing a lot about IP addresses, but I'm also hearing that that some some um, some 
data company, data management management platforms. I'm talking to one data management platform right now that focuses on CTV, OTT, and they think that the IP address is the future, the replacement for, for, for cookies. But the thing with IP address is, you know, some, some organizations, companies they view it as person as PII as personally identifiable information. So I think, I think there's a little bit of a risk there. I mean, not right now, not today, but at some point in the future, they might come for the IP address too. Like, uh, um, but they're, um, yeah. Um, th that's right now. That's what I'm. I'm thinking, and I'm. I'm doing. At, I don't think anyone knows yet, to be honest, because if you talk to anyone in the industry, like I have friends at the IAB that I talk to, everybody's just kind of watching and waiting to see what's going to happen before you lock yourselves into a strategy right now, at least on the, on the publisher side. Um, but if I had to say anything right now, I would lean towards IP. But, you know, then there's, but there's, you know, things like the UID 2.0 that I mentioned before that are being, that are being worked on. Um, and I know, I think the IAB is involved in that as well. Um, so it's kind of wait and see. I know that's not a great answer, but that I don't have the crystal ball, but um, <laughs> it's going to be, it, it could all change tomorrow. That's why like Google or Apple could do something tomorrow that makes everybody go, oh crap, now we get, we've been going this way. Now we got to go this way. So nobody's, folks that I've been talking to, nobody's really like locking themselves into like, this is how we're going forward. Everybody's kind of waiting and seeing what's going to happen before it's clearer. If that makes sense. And do you have any more on, on your end? None on my end. So if that's it, we can pass it to Katie to, to uh, do our closing for today. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time um, today to share information about digital advertising. I think it's very fascinating how Apple alone can help drive the entire advertising industry. So this was very great. Um, so much information that um, you gathered for us. Um, I'm Katie Pavel. I'm with Peer Sales Agency here in Omaha, and I serve as AAF's um, Nebraska's Professional Development and Programs Co-Chair. Our Board of Directors has been working to bring creative events, conferences, new fun events, webinars, virtual programming, um, and in-person per programming to benefit all of our members. So to be a member, um, you can get member perks, event discounts um, that are only offer, offered to our members. Um, so today's perk winner is Janet Knoll from Telemundo to Nebraska TV. Um, we thank our sponsors, Basis Technologies for today's member's gift, which is a gift card to Chocolate A Bay. So Janet, your member perk will be sent to you. Um, we have so many generous sponsors, so thank you so much to AAF's Nebraska's Elite Sponsors, Women Life and Envoy, and then Basis Technologies, which is formerly Centro. Uh, they announced last month that they have changed their name to Basis Technologies, so thank you so much to our sponsors. Uh, I just wanted to announce some of our upcoming events. Um, November 8th, we have Boom Roasted, so this year we're going to be roasting um, and toasting several of our members on um, the 18th at Alamo Draft House, which is in La Vista. Uh, Jen Landis from Pink Curl, Curl Girls and Patrick Stibbs from On The Spot Productions will be roasted this year, so it will be very exciting. Um, we'll be toasting to our 2021 and 22 Ad Pro and Ad Rookie of the Year by honoring and toasting Kelly Britton, UNL professor, and Adam Turner from 1123. Dinner is not going to be included with the cost of admission, um, but you're going to be able to order your own food and beverages at Alamo. Then's going to get started at 6 p.m. with networking, and the roast is scheduled to start at 7 p.m. So you can register for this on our website at aafnebraska.org. We also have a great annual party, which will be taking place on December 7th. So it'll be called Hope for the Holidays, and it's going to be held at Field Club here in Omaha at 4.30. So once again, again we'll be offering um, an online silent auction that will close at the conclusion of the holiday party. It'll be a very fun event with raffle prizes throughout the party. Um, we have a wine pool, so much entertainment. Um, we'll be hearing from our public service partners from the Partnership for Hope. So watch your email invitation for this event and um, you'll get more information on the silent auction coming up. It will be on Bidding Owl again this year, which is going to go live in a couple of weeks. Um, the silent auction will close during the in-person event 
allowing attendees to check out their high bids and giving them the opportunity to take home their awesome um, prizes. Donations will be coming through, um, gift baskets, gift certificates, pop-up banner stands, area event concert tickets, um, just so much more um, in addition to media items as well. We also have the American Advertising Awards. Um, this is recognizes the best and brightest ads and campaigns created by Nebraska businesses and advertising agencies. The members participate in this prestigious event. It's created as an opportunity to recognize and um, reward all of the creative excellence across Nebraska in the art of advertising. It's become one of the industry's most respected competitions. It's kind of like the Oscars of advertising. Um, it's conducted annually by AAF, and the local awards are the first of three-tier national competition. In the second tier, the winners compete um, against other winners in 14 district competitions that are also being held at the same time across the country. So district winners are then forward to the third tier, which is the American Advertising Awards. So the post or the entry opened up yesterday. So you should receive an email with the entry information directing you to the new AAA's website, creativenebraska.org. The deadline um, this year for all of our entries will be at the last day of the year, December 31st. So our local advertising award show, Creative Nebraska, will be hosted on the 20 or on February 19th. And this will be held at Coneco. Um, if you have any questions, about this year's awards, um, please contact the AAF Nebraska office or our events co-chair, which is Lauren Schuster or David Moore. Um, that is all we have for, to, for you today. Um, just wanna thank everyone for attending and learning about the IOS impact, um, but thank you so much to Mark for speaking today. This was wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. Before everyone pops off, would, would we like to take a group photo? Uh, everyone would have to turn your cameras. Turn your cameras on. Okay. We're still, there we go. Everyone would say cheese. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> You're welcome. Thank you. Great presentation, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.